I mean, I don't know how you see it on the from where you are and where you stand, but I mean, you know, for us guys in the media, I mean, yeah. you know, especially me when I'm reading news stories on all the bands all day long and the idea that or or the image that you portray yeah. and like you said very honest i mean yeah that's the one thing that i mean i've even described to dominic the guy yeah. right here and how every time we've talked to you it's been just Corey taylor yeah. has been Corey taylor oh hey i'm i'm paul stanley yeah you know yeah too good to talk to you not exactly. saying that paul tana stanley would do that but yeah. that's it's a it, it's a caricature mm -hmm. that they've cultivated right because they think they need to portray a different face Right. to the audience for whatever reason you know and part of it is because they value their privacy and whatnot I'm not knocking that right but you know at the end of the day if you spend 20 30 years at this playing someone else you will become that person you know or you wake up one day and you're like holy crap I'm 60 and I haven't got to live my own life right I'm not going to be that guy, you know. I mean, if I can't be honest with people, if I, can't, if I can't enjoy myself, if I can't have my attitude and do this, then I don't want to do it anymore. It's just that simple. It's not worth it, man. We ask this question at the time. We talk about it all the time at the station. We always say like, name the top five drummers. Yeah. It's kind of like, what was that movie, High Fidelity? Like, top five oh, yeah, records. top five records. Right. Absolutely. Love that movie. We do that, you know, every now and again. But the question I think that we always ask, we say, it's not that we knock the music today, but we say, what is missing in rock and roll today? Huh. What do you think is missing in rock today that surely fans balls. come out to the venue? Talent. Balls and talent. You think there's no balls well, and talent? Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're looking at a, you know, you're looking at an industry that 90% of them let the computer do that the work for them. You know, you're also looking at people who have been running around signing all these bands with higher cheekbones than most mm -hmm. who uh, honestly have no they, they don't even have the talent to write their own songs for them right? and they're they're disposable because the industry wants them to be disposable they need a turnover rate they need to have that fresh music and they need well not the fresh music but that fresh image mm -hmm. that they can then take and put on another stable of new bands waiting in the wings so they can have that you know, that influx of cash. The right. only way they think they're staying afloat right now. So you have things like artist development going right out the window. I'm very fortunate to be where I'm at because I've actually been able to develop my, my career, you know? Not because I hit right out of the gate, but because we took chances and we were able to kind of build something. But what if these bands say, yeah, we are taking chances? Do, then, you, do you think they're taking I, honest chances? You show me where you're taking chances when every song you have sounds like 12 other goddamn bands that's out there. No band has their own identity anymore, you know? And it used to be they did. Right. And that's what's, not pathetic, but it's just, it's, it's, it's made it common. There's no specialness anymore. There's no standouts anymore. The there are no people, of they, well, sound. there's no leaders right. anymore. I was talking, I was actually talking to Zach Wilde about this. You know, he's like, we were talking about, you know, the industry loves to blame the technology for the downloading and why the industry is kind of in the toilet. And we, we both were like, it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's because the labels don't do anything to encourage bands to be themselves. They want them to just be that vanilla, same note, same sample, same garbage guitar tone, crap. And they want to be able to package them and sell them like hot, like hamburgers. Right. And because of that, there will never be another back in black. Right. There will That's never right. be another Appetite for Destruction. Right. There will never be another Led Zeppelin IV. Right. Those albums that define not only the moment, but a generation. Right. You'll never have that again because the labels don't care. Yeah. And because the fans have started to figure it out. Right. You know, it's pathetic. Not bagging any labels or anything like that. It's just I see kind of what you see in a yeah. sense, you know. Yeah. Um, and this is why part of it is why you are standing here doing the things that you're doing, you know. Yeah. And, and this is why you become successful. I mean, you've gone from Slipknot to doing, you know, Stone Sour to now just doing your own thing. I mean, putting your hand in whatever. I mean, every time someone says, "What's Corey doing?" Well, he's always busy. Yeah. You're always busy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, basically. I could never invite you for a barbecue because you'd be like, I'm too busy. Oh yeah, I'm always gone. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, I mean, it's 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 a good problem to have. Yeah, exactly. Me. And absolutely. I'm not one of these assholes that looks a gift horse in the mouth. I'm very, very, I'm very fortunate to have what I have. 
you know, I'm very lucky to have a fan base that the, the, the way I do, right? Well, that it's very accepting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's taken a lot of work, uh, you know, little talent, um, but it, if I didn't have the fans to get to me to where I am, I, I wouldn't be where I am. So I'm very fortunate and grateful. Very cool. Corey, thank you so much. No worries, kid. Appreciate thank it, man. You.